Now that we've seen what goes inside the control and relay panels, let's see how we lay them out inside the control room. All substations have a dedicated room where the control and relay panels are located. The size and shape of the room will be dictated by the present and future needs of the substation. The first thing to bear in mind is that we need to get the panels in and out of the room. Some panels can be up to 2.2 meters high, and we therefore need to make sure that the door height is sufficient to allow the panel and the trolley on which it is sat to get into and out of the room. It's also a good idea to provide double width doors inside the control room to give you some more flexibility when you're installing the panels. How do we locate the panels inside the room? Well, most control and relay panels need front and rear access. The front of the panel normally has a glass door, allows the operators to read all of the relay flags and indications. We need to access the rear of the panel to get access to the internal wires and terminals, and also the cables that are entering the panel. We therefore position the panels at least 1.5 meters from the wall, which allows us to open the panel door and work freely inside the panel. We then have to decide how we group the panels together. We normally do this by function. So in this substation, we group all of the transformer protection panels together, the 115 kV protection panels together, SCADA, metering, circuit breaker failure, buzz bar protection, and finally, the 34.5 kV protection panels. In most substation control rooms, you will also find some wall mounted panels, such as DC distribution panels and AC distribution panels, which will provide all of the supplies needed for the relay control panels. It's also common to find an operator's desk and some filing cabinets. As you can see, we also provide space for the future panels so that the substation could be expanded easily. If we didn't do this, every time we added new circuits to the substation, we'd need to expand the size of the relay room. We've also maintained a suitable distance between the panels to provide access for the operators and to allow us to add or remove any panels that we need to in future. It's also good practice to provide a central walkway between the main access doors that the operators can use to walk through the building. We've now covered all of the typical features of a substation control room.